But it's just, it is just, it is, it is just words coming from your mouth. He is a mighty God. He is a, he said, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Do you know how excellent the God that we serve? Are we, we just taking it for granted. We're just going through the motion. When, when, when somebody say, how mighty is it? We should be, we should have been bowing down. We should have been worshiping. We should have been filling our hearts with praise and thanksgiving. We should let the, the praises of the Lord rise among us. We should give him everything and empty everything from within us. We should be giving a sacrifice of praise today. And I pray that maybe maybe you're going through it, maybe it's hard for you, but if you just if you just lift your hand and then just say hallelujah. Just say hallelujah. Just say hallelujah and see how it changes. Just say thank you, Lord. Just forget about your situation and your trials and say, God, you are a good God. And you are a mighty God. And something has to change and something has to shift in your atmosphere. Because when you start praising, you take the attention off of yourself and you put it back on the, the Lord God Almighty. Something shifts, even your, even your energy and, your, and how you're feeling. So if I'm, I, 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 I'm imploring you today, if you're feeling tired or depressed or you just don't want to do anything, just lift your hand. Just start by doing that and say, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And say, Mighty God! Mighty God! Mighty God! Rise among us today. And you just give Him your praise and you empty yourself. You're going to see why right I believe this, this platform. It's gonna, you're going to say it was good to be here today. So I build this church. I welcome you. It's always a privilege to honor and to, to glorify God with my brothers and my sisters. I just want to say I love you, Life Builders Church. You know, it, it's not the same hugging on each other, but, you know, it's still worship, and it, it's a new way of worshiping, and we're still adapting, but don't forget who we are. We are Life Builders Church, and we are worshiping set of people. So lift your hands and open your mouth. Call the family. Wake the children up. Call the husband and put him beside you and you start worshiping together because this is an honor and a privilege to worship with you. So come on in. And if we have any guests on the line today, I just want to welcome you. And I promise you, it, you won't regret stopping by. So it might be later on down in, in, in the week that you, you're strolling because um, somebody you know is on the, um, is a life builder partner, so you're coming across it. Or you, you, you're just strolling through it and you're, you're coming to contact with Life Builder. I'm praying that your life will never be the same in Jesus' name. And so on behalf of our bishop and his lovely wife, we just want to say thank you for stopping by. Thank you for even strolling and even stopping and looking at our page or just even worshiping with us because we don't take that for granted. And I pray that whatever your needs are today, whatever you're going through, whatever your situation, that the Holy Spirit, that the Lord God Almighty, the mighty God that high serve, that we serve, will meet you in Jesus' mighty name. So I thank you. Like Build this Church, I love this part because, you know, this is the part that we get to greet each other. So I want you to put in a, just reach out to Life Builder Partner today and just, Say hi, how you doing? Hallelujah. You know, just greet them. Greet the, the guests. Put something, greet our guests, and greet each other in the name of Jesus. See, let us not take for granted this part of the service because you don't know what others are going through. I'm a, I'm a nurse, and I'm, I do home health, and I've seen, I've seen the devastation that this pandemic. I've seen elderly in the home by themselves have nobody to help them. I've seen young Young, depressed, can lift their head up. Don't take it for granted to encourage somebody today and to say, Jesus loves you. I love you, but Jesus loves you best. And, you know, throughout the week, call somebody. God sent somebody in, the, uh, in your spirit. Call them because you, you, your, your word might, be, might, might produce life unto them because you don't know what is going on. They might just need an upliftment. You say, high in sharpness, high in soul does... The, the, the man shot the continent of his friend so let us greet each other and let us greet our guests so they know that there is not an accident to come onto this um, place today in the name of Jesus so my the scripture reading that uh, is from Genesis 8 and I'm going to start reading from 18 and then I'm going to end uh, ver um, in the chapter 9 at verse 3 and it says so now and his son and his wife and his sons wives went out 
every beast, every crawling thing, every bird, and everything that moved on the earth according to the, their families went out of the heart. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal, of every clean bird, and offered a burnt sacrifice on the altar. The, the Lord smelled a, smooth, a soothing aroma, and the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of man, for the inclination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have done. While the herd remains seed times and harvest, cold and winter, summer, cold and eat, summer and winter, and day and night will not cease. Then God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the herd. Every beast of the earth and every bird of the skies and all that moves on the, on the herd and all the fish of the seas and will fear you and be terrified of you. And they, was given unto your, they are given unto your hand. Every moving thing that lives will be food for you and I will give you everything just as I gave you the green plants. And you know when I read this this, this chapter, this, this chapter, if you if you notice Noah, they, Noah and his family just went through a devastation. They, they, the the hurt was wiped out. People that they knew was wiped out. Um, life as they knew it before ceased to exist, and it's it's now a reset. It's new beginning. It 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 is it, now a new fresh start. And you know what you see what Noah did. Noah build and hard what he did he worship your worship is important because in the midst of god hunger and god rise god it was a sweet aroma to god and god said he will never destroy the earth like he did before he made a promise and then it's he go down and then he blessed Noah and his his, his family and then what he commanded Noah to do in the midst of all that be Fruitful and multiply and fill the herd. You have a commandment. You have a mandate to do. Now I don't care what you're going through. It could be the, the worst, worst devastation. You a family member die. You might have financial issue. You might be going through whatever. But we serve a mighty God, and the God that we serve is going to take you through it. And when He take you through it, and when you're going through it, you need to be on heart. You need to worship so you can hear from God. But you still have to be faithful, and you still have to multiply, and you still have to subdue. And He said, everything on this earth is underneath our control. So why are we fearful? He said, they shall fear us. So why are we fearing the stuff on this earth? God said, they they will fear you, but we are fearing the things around us. When God already put everything underneath our control. So I pray today that you might, you might, I'm not, I'm not underestimating what you're going through. I trust me. I know I'm a nurse. I've been out, I'm out there and I'm feeling it. I'm a single mother and I have to do all this. I know what you're going through. But at the same time, God still wants us to be faithful and he still wants us to multiply and he wants us to still worship. We still have to worship so we can hear from him. So in the mighty name of Jesus, we're going to, we're going to, um, I'm going to pray for you this morning. So let us, let us pray. Let's look to the Lord. Father God, I thank Thank you because you are mighty God. You are a mighty, mighty, mighty God. And I bow. I bow as your servant. I bow as your daughter. I bow and I give you the glory. I give you the honor. I give you the praise that is due unto your name. Father God, I will not let the rock cry out. I will not let the trees bow down. And every opportunity that I have, I open my mouth and I fill it with your praise. Because God, you are the faithful God. You are the protector that protected me through the through every devastation, through every valley, through every situation. And Father God, I've proven you to know that you are a good God. So God, I pray for your people today that they will remain faithful and they will multiply and they will subdue the earth and let them know, dear God, that you already given them, dear God, even the trials and the tribulation that they're, they're, that they're going through, dear God, they don't have to fear it, oh God, because God, you have given them authority to speak to their situation, to speak to their mountain, because Jesus died for their sin. Jesus has redeemed it. He said, let the redeem of the Lord say so, dear God. So God, even the ones, dear God, that have not been redeemed, dear God, I pray, dear God, that they will have an encounter. I pray that today, 
dear God, that somebody will have an encounter, oh God, a life-changing encounter that they will never go back, oh God, and they will become a true worshiper, and they will connect to you today, dear God, and they will worship you in spirit and truth, and dear God, it will come into their destiny and their purpose, oh God, and they will be fruitful, faithful, oh God, and multiply, fruitful and multiply, oh God. I pray for this worship today, dear God. I thank you, dear God, that the enemy, oh God, does not succeed, dear God. I thank you, dear God, that you are protecting the airway and the, the byways, dear God. I thank you, God, the signal, dear God, will, will function, oh God. The equipment will function, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And we will go forth, oh God, and your glory will go through this earth, oh God, and somebody will get the gospel today, God. Somebody will hear. Somebody will be uplifted. I pray, dear God, in the name of Jesus, that the Holy Spirit will rise up in this worship today. Hallelujah to your name, God. Father God, you know where they are, oh God. You know where their heads are bowed down. You know where their hurtings are, God. You know where they are today. I pray, dear God, that you'll reach them, Holy Spirit. Do what only you can do and reach those unreachable today, dear God, that we don't even know where they are. But, dear God, because they, they come in contact with the, the, this broadcast, oh God, their life will never be the same, oh God. So, God, I thank you today for your anointing that breaks every yoke, oh God, that lifts every bondage, oh God, that destroy, oh God, everything that try to destroy us, oh God. We are your people. But we are the sheep of your pastor, oh God. And so, God, we enter into your gates with thanksgiving today, oh God. We enter your courts with praise, and we are thankful unto you, and we bless your name, oh God. And we'll not let our situation define us, oh God, because you are the mighty God that we serve, oh God. And you are faithful, and you are true, and you will take us through this moment, and you will take us through the God eternity, God, God, because you are faithful, God. And give your name the glory. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. Open your mouth and start to worship in the name of Jesus. And I give your name, the glory, and the honor, and praise God, because you are worthy to be praised in Jesus' mighty name. Let us do our corporate decoration. And let us not take it for granted. Let us let us do it together. I know I'm, I'm the one saying, but come on, let's do it together in Life Builder Church like we normally do it. Life Builders Church is a church and ministry focused on the agenda of the kingdom of God. We are corporately called to be a people of prayer, kingdom action, kingdom building, and transformers of life, and builders of people that know their purpose and take their place as productive citizens of the kingdom of God. We have God mandate. We have all necessary components in place inclusive of power, provision, personnel, and people. We have, we have men for the vision and people for the work. We have everything we need. We have all that God ordained for us to have, possess, and obtain for his purpose. We are a stable house with longevity. We are relevant and we are vibrant and fresh. We impact this generation and future generation for your glory, for his glory. 2022 is our year to retake mountains and territory, and we are doing that. Come on. 2022 is our year to retake mountains and territory, lands and platforms with divine strategy and solution as we build and expand for the kingdom and the glory of God. We, without, we, without fear, recover all, and that's what we do, like Illustrate, and that's what we do. It. We do it dangerously. My sister Celina, thank God for you. And I always just thank God for the young people. I love to see our young people worshiping and shaming the devil. So go for it, my sister, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Elder Evangelist Harriet, for leading us further. Thank you for that awesome prayer and for ushering us back into the spirit of God. We just want to prepare and center our hearts and come into a place of worship. Center yourselves. Settle yourself, clear your mind, clear any distractions, anything that might be keeping you from being focused on the word. We just want to center ourselves and worship God today. Worship God today. Because he is truly an awesome God. He is our Lord. Jesus, you are Lord. You are Lord. And your name is mighty. Your name is worthy to be praised. Your name is is the name above all names. So we acknowledge you today, God, at the mention of your name, God, at the mention of your name, God. Your name is so mighty that we can just mention it and things change. So we praise you, we honor you, we worship you today, God. You are so awesome, so 
so you are so awesome, God. Hallelujah.
Jesus, you are, you alone. Jesus, you alone. Oh, Jesus, you alone. Jesus, you alone. Jesus, you are Lord. Oh, oh, oh. Come on and stay in the worship. Cry out, Jesus. Jesus, you are Lord. Oh, oh, oh. Jesus, you are You love Jesus, you are Lord. Oh, oh, oh. Somebody call on Jesus. Come on, let's join with Talia. She has the right idea. She has the right idea to worship. Come on, join, join in, join in. Join in. Come on, worship. I feel the anointing. Come on and worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and join in with the worship. Glory to God. I, I thank you, Lord, for your presence. I thank you, Lord, for your glory. I thank you for your power and your mercy. Jesus, you are Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, come on, just say that. Jesus, you are Lord. Oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. Yes, Lord. Jesus, you are Lord. Oh, it's so wonderful to be in his presence. One more time. Jesus, you are Lord. Come on, lift your hands. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12 that no man can call Jesus Lord but by the Holy Ghost. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for being in our worship today. We thank you for your presence in this room right now. Oh, Holy God, awesome God, everlasting God, King of saints. God, our Redeemer, Lord of heaven and earth. Oh, my God, I feel the Lord up in here. I tell you, I tell you, I feel him because he's so faithful, so awesome, and so mighty to save. Jesus, you are Lord. Oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Father God, give us ears to hear, hearts to receive lives that will be transformed for your glory. Lord, take me out of self. Use me for somebody else. This is my prayer for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Great job this morning. Elder Harriet, thank you. Thank you. Great job, Talia. Great job, my God, behind the camera. Had some technical difficulties, but it'll be fixed by next week. Our broadcast will be on Facebook a little later. It will definitely be on our YouTube page. But aren't you glad you're here? I remember the old saints. If I had our musicians, I'd tune up for a minute. We're so glad I'm here in Jesus' name. But uh, I do know what you come to do. I know what I come to do. I come to praise his name. Beloved. I'm ready for the word. I am thankful. We're in the month of March. This is March 6, 2022. Two years now. Oh my goodness. We have been in this pandemic season. I do ask that as the metrics change, that you not take for granted. You still should wear your mask. I know I'm following the wisdom that Sister Roz, Aunt Judy, would give us 
you should still wear your mask, my God, because then you will be understanding that everybody around, uh, you're maybe needing to be protected from them and they they may not be as hygienic as you. I am not trying to insult anybody. I'm just simply wanting the saints of life builders to be strong and protected. In public, still wear your mask. I know we're vaccinated and all, and I'm not putting down the vaccine, but you want to make sure until this is passed that you don't have a relapse of any kind. Not saying you will, but we want to be careful. So I'm asking you continue to use good hygiene, safe distance, wash your hands, continue to exercise wisdom, and let God arise and every enemy be scattered. Beloved, hold up your Bibles, if you will, and let's get into this word. Lord, I thank you that I have my Bible. It is my personal copy, a basic instruction before leaving earth. I am a believer, not a doubter. I'm not just a hearer, but I'm also a doer. And my life is so much more the blessed because I hear and I obey the word of the living God. And I declare my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will not be distracted, but I will hear what the Lord has to say. And as a result of what I hear today, somebody help me declare, I'm going to leave this experience. Yeah, better than I came to it in Jesus' name. I want to talk about your minds today. We're still talking about recovery. We're still in this season of recovery. And I want to talk about the recovery of our right mind. The recovery of our Right mind. Can somebody help me declare that today I will recover my right mind? It's not saying there's something wrong with you. It's not saying that something happened to you. But, beloved, we've been through a lot. I was telling our leaders yesterday, and I was having a moment of transparency. I've had several friends die this pandemic season. Gratefully, I didn't have to do their funerals. Gratefully, we have done no funerals uh, because of COVID for any of our Life Builders partners during this last few years of pandemic because of COVID. We've not had anybody in the hospital on a respirator or ventilator. God has been good to Life Builders Church. Oh, yeah. God has been good to us. See, some of y'all don't understand. I don't want to get more of it. But as a pastor, when I marry a partner, it's not easy. And all the time being the last one to close the casket, tucking them in, so to speak. And I see their face one last time. It's, it's not easy. For partners, because of COVID, have not had to do that. And the only one that went home was Mama, who was 101 almost, because Mama was ready. Mama Alexander, we love you. We think of her fondly, and we're praising God for her life. Oh, I'm going to dedicate some things to her, because she meant so much to all of us, and she still does. But, beloved, I, I talked to the leaders about how much we went through how much we have experienced, how much these last two years have been a strain. Yeah, it has been. Mentally, financially, physically, emotionally. We've all been pulled. And if I or anyone else were to say I wasn't, I'd be lying to you. This has been a pull of great proportion over these last two years. Pandemic started somewhere in December of 2019 and began to spread after January 2020 and, and just all throughout the country, all throughout the world, everybody has been impacted. 
I'm not praising pandemic, but I'm acknowledging the need for this word today. So from today on, let's go chronicling. I desire that we understand that our right mind is the same as the mind of Christ. I, I no longer want my mind to dominate. I want the mind of Christ. Can y'all say that, tweet that, write that down in the chat? From the day I declare, I want the mind of Christ. Now, let me talk to you for a minute because we have our fleshly or carnal mind that the Bible says is enmity or the word hostile towards God. Can I say that again? We have our fleshly or our carnal mind that the Bible clearly delineates is hostile. Enmity towards God. Hostile. It's like Keep it there a minute, Chronicle. I want, I, want, I want that to sink in because it's like your sleep, good sleep. Anybody ever been good sleep? I mean, you in it. <laughs> Me and my wife often tease each other when we're sleeping hard. And, and I say, man, you enjoying your sleep. <laughs> and she catches me sometimes when I'm enjoying my sleep. I mean, that means we're deep sleep. And then... Someone comes in and turns on the light or makes some noise or something. And it's like, oh, what you doing? You know, turn that light out. You know, it's the same kind of emotion. The same kind of emotion. I'm in darkness. I'm deep sleep. And somebody comes in and disturbs me in the state of deep sleep. Well, our fleshly mind is sleep <laughs> to the things of God. But when the light is turned on, it reacts in hostility. That's why you see some people get angry when you try to witness to them. Because the light is shining. Some people get angry even when you come around and say good morning. Because the light is shining. And they are in darkness Needing your light. God have mercy. Look with me at Romans chapter 8 and verse 7. Because I want you to see what the scripture says about this fleshly mind. The Bible says the carnal mind, or the word carnal is the same as the word fleshly, is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be mm. enmity, hostile towards God. I like the way the NIV puts it. Look down in your notes and it says, the mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. God, that's a big statement. The Hostile, fleshly mind towards God does not submit to God, nor can it do so. God have mercy. I used to be caught up on sin and when people do wrong. You know, I wasn't mature in that area because I'm thinking everybody should love Jesus. I'm thinking everybody should want to serve God. I'm thinking, what's your problem? I love God. You love God? <laughs> What's wrong with you? You know, that's how I felt. I mean, that's Mary Mary in their song, but I honestly felt that way. I'm like, how could anybody not love the Lord as good as he is? But the scripture says, the carnal, fleshly, hostile mind towards God does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so? Let's deal with that, okay? Because one of the unfortunate outflows of the pandemic is that we are scattered. Yeah, we're connected by Zoom today. Thank God for our new Zoom number and 
our new Zoom code. And this is what we'll be using from now on. We'll be back on Facebook Live next week. Things happen for a reason. I've learned that. Uh, the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord and he delights in their way. I've learned that. So I'm happy with those that are tuned into Zoom today. I want y'all to stay with us till the end, okay? Got some good news. But the word of God says the carnal mind is hostile. The carnal mind is enmity, in enmity with God. And, and because we're scattered, I mean, you're at your house right now. I'm at my house. You know, we're, 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 we're not able to get together like we want to. Some are still kind of afraid to come together in crowds. I understand we're not pressuring anybody. But I, I, I need us to understand that being a part of the body of Christ involves us being a part. A part. I mean, gathering, fellowshipping, interacting. Now, I know you all agree. I heard uh, Elder, Elder Harriet say, Evangelist Harriet, she said, you know, we, we, we still get used to this. I mean, this is not what I want, but this is what we have. And Light Builder is going to make the best of what we have. But gathering, fellowshipping, interacting is what we're used to. I mean, by now, we would have hugged each other. We would have been crying through worship, hands lifted up, mouth filled with praise. You know, we're at home. Some of y'all in robes. I don't see you, but I know. <laughs> Some of y'all still have the bonnets on your head. Um, some of the brothers may be in a tank top and, or muscle shirt, you know, guns in effect. Some may have on plaid pajamas. Some may even have on a, a onesie. You know what I'm talking about? Donald Duck or Mickey Mouse or Scooby-Doo. <laughs> and you may not want to be seen in public, you know. The pandemic took us out of the church house. And there were several unfortunate things that happened as a result of that. First of all, if you have a strong relationship with God, you knew what to do to maintain it during these last two years. You know it's time to pray, you get up out the bed, you know, and uh, you, you, you seek the Lord, you, you have your devotion time, you know, you read the word. I mean, you know what to do to build your strength up. I mean, you're, you're, you're a veteran now. Let me use uh, the word that was used last week. I think Elder Keisha said it. You're a veteran, okay? You're, you're, you're seasoned. And so seasoned saints kind of know how to keep their strength up. More times than not. Can we agree to that? Okay. But also, since we've been out of the church house, if your relationship was not as strong or developing, it took work to find that safe space to be stable at least. Can y'all agree with that? I mean, it took work. I mean, even for the season, it took work. I mean, all these concerns. Can I go out? Can I not? If I go to the store, will somebody cough on me? If, 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 if I pick up something, will COVID germs be on it? I mean, there's been a lot on our minds. And let's not forget, if your relationship was not strong or is not strong, you probably did nothing to increase it. Let's be honest about it. Let's be honest. I mean, if you weren't praying, maybe you prayed out of fear a few times when you saw that you didn't die or the vaccine worked, then, you know, you may have stopped praying. Come on, can we be honest? Come on, come on. <laughs> now, I want y'all to understand that church attendance alone Cannot grow your relationship. But one of the outflows of church attendance is being in earshot 
of or proximity to the word. I mean, there are messages that I remember Bishop Saunders preaching when I wasn't saved. And, and I may not have been listening, but I heard. You know, there's a difference between hearing and listening. My focus wasn't on what Bishop was saying, but I heard it. I mean, because when you go to church, you can't help but hear it. Even when you got your head back and you're trying to sleep, you're still hearing it. You're getting it by osmosis. Hmm. I'm moving on now, but if the mind of Christ, part of us, was non-existent or barely developed, there was either struggling or coping. How many know that's true? I mean, do you all notice, and I'm not throwing rocks, the bars never closed during the shutdown. They kept the bars open. Do you all remember that? Back this time last, two years ago, Billy's bar was still open. You can go in and still get your fifth because they wanted people to be able to cope. <laughs> Y'all know I'm telling the truth. If the mind of Christ, part of us, was barely there, it's probably still barely there. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Come on. Can't get where we need to go lying. Okay. Now, the mind of part, mind of Christ, part of us that is strong, still strong, but it probably by now needs a booster shot, a booster shot. Come on, let's be honest. Now, today, if you would allow me to elaborate, my mission today is threefold. 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 First of all, I want to remind all of us how good God has been to us. Again, like I said earlier, God, can we praise him for a few moments? Can we praise him that we haven't had to bury a member during this pandemic? Can we praise him that we have not had to see anybody fade away in the hospital and die alone during this pandemic? I mean, such horrible things happened during this pandemic. Lord, thank you that you kept us from this mess. Our immediate family members are still around us. Our, 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 our distant family members, many of them are still here. Lord, thank you that when we first entered this pandemic, we preached about we're from Goshen, yeah, and that anointing held us strong. We preached from Psalm 91, and that word held us strong. We covered by the blood, every aspect of life and ministry as we went on. And the blood still works. Hmm. feel like preaching now. I said the blood still works. We're still from Goshen. Hmm. And Psalm 91, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my God, my fortress, my strength in him will I trust. Oh, only with my eyes will I behold the reward of the wicked. Y'all know what the scriptures say. God been good to life builders. He's been good to us. We fed almost 7,000 people during these last two years. Yes, we have fed them. We paid bills. We helped people. God been good to us. We put on our mask and delivered groceries. We delivered produce. I said, God been good to us. Mm. Number two, my mission is to remind all of us that we see how important it is to have and maintain the mind of Christ. Come on, I'm going to tell you why. That's going to be more important now than ever. And number three, I want all of us to develop that mind of Christ part of us. Now, let me move along so I can let you go. Come on now. We are in times that require not only a strong mind, but the correct mind. I mean, we can have mental 
toughness exercises. We can get up every day and uh, focus on a spot for so long and, and uh, you know, bring our focus strength. And we can do mental puzzles and things, but nothing wrong with that. But beloved, the times we're in now requires a little bit more than secular means. We not only need a strong mind, we need the correct mind. Can I get a witness? We already read how the fleshly mind has limits. In fact, we said what the scripture said is enmity, hostile against God. Mm. If we realize that, that is hostile towards God, we also need to know that the fleshly or human mind will fail you miserably. I, I, I think that some of us need to be reminded of that. It will fail. Your mind will fail you. I'm not talking about Alzheimer's. I'm not talking about dementia. I'm talking about just a part of the human experience. No one's mind remembers everything at every given time. You may know it. You may know it. Some of you students recently graduated. <laughs> Remember those exams? Some that have taken nurse exams. You passed it, but something slipped you and you had to pray. Lord, let me remember what that is. Let me remember how to minister and how to administer the right medication. Help me to remember, my God, how close I'm to get to a patient, how far I'm to stay from. I mean, you had to, you'll take the test and some things slip you because the pressure, pressure can make you forget sometimes. Come on, let's be honest. We're human beings. Huh. The arm of flesh will fail you miserably. Look at Jeremiah. I'm almost done. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5 and 6. Look at what the prophet said. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, whose heart departeth from the Lord, for he shall be like the health, or the heath actually, the heath in the desert, dried up, Kindling, stubble that could catch fire at a moment and burn to a crisp. And shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land not inhabited. Look at the New Language Translation, how it puts it. Thus saith the Lord God, cursed be the man that trusteth in man. This is what the Lord says. Cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans. Ah, who rely on human strength and turn their hearts away from the Lord. They are like stunted shrubs in the desert with no hope for the future. They will live in the barren wilderness in an inhabited uninhabited salty land. Beloved, before I close, I want to give you a few facts. I, I, I want to make sure that you understand I ain't giving you theory. Excuse my English. I am not giving you theory. I am giving you facts. Can we get this mind of Christ? We are in the decade of conflict and war. Yeah, we are. Prophetically speaking, the Lord has spoken. Um, I'm putting this as mildly as I can. Jesus said there will be what? Wars and rumors of wars. And it's happening both in the realm of the flesh as well as in the realm of the spirit. I will be a horrible pastor. I will be an inept and ineffective prophet. If I did not tell you the truth of the times we're living in, we would not just see Ukraine versus Russia. My God, China will soon try to flex his muscles against Taiwan and other nations in that region because they have a plan to expand their empire, just like Russia does. Come on, somebody. We're going to see conflict. Whether or not the United States will be a part of it or not, 
Beloved, if it don't have anything to do with us, I pray we stay out. We have a tendency sometime in our country to think we're the world's police and we surely don't have all the answers. We divided ourselves. We're not ready to go to no long war with anybody because of our nation's division. God have mercy. But in the realm of the spirit and the flesh, this is the decade of conflict. You're not just hearing it from me. Prophets are speaking because God said, I will not allow anything to happen in the earth without first warning my prophets. I am a bona fide prophet. You all know my pedigree. I'm a man of God and I'm not being a parrot saying what others have said. I'm saying what the Lord has shown me. We are in the decade of conflict. Mm. Another fact. There is so much going on around us that if our mind is not properly ordered, we are not only liable to easily be distracted, God have mercy, we are sitting ducks for the attack of the enemy. Your mind is not neutral. Y'all got to hear me now. Your mind cannot maintain neutrality. Either it's for God or it's for the enemy. Why? Because the fleshly mind, carnal mind, is hostile towards God. So if it's hostile towards God, you can't say by default, well, I still don't want Satan. A hostile mind is an unprotected mind. Oh, I hope y'all writing this down. A hostile mind is a vulnerable mind. A hostile mind is a mind that's easily trapped. A hostile mind is a mind that the devil can play with at will. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. You're sitting duck for the enemy when you're not operating in the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ ensures, y'all getting these notes, God have mercy, victorious outcomes regardless of the struggle. Oh, I want to say that again. The mind of Christ ensures victorious outcomes regardless of the struggle. It don't matter what you're dealing with. I got the victory. Oh my God, I got the victory. I got the victory. I remember when my dad was sick and my dad passed on. Beloved, I felt so horrible. I felt like the devil had defeated. I honestly, sharing vulnerability with you, I felt I failed my father because we were confessing. We were believing. We were standing on the word, but my father wanted to go be with the Lord. That's the right of every believer. I believe my dad got a glimpse of heaven and said, as much Betty as I love you, as much children as I love you, I got to go see Jesus. <laughs> I didn't fail my father. My father wanted to see Jesus. And for the believer with the mind of Christ, <laughs> well, it makes victorious outcomes your realization. What are you talking about? To be absent from the body, be present for the Lord. I'm not rushing to die, but I know with this assurance that I have from the word that I'm with the Lord. God have mercy. Mm. Woo. God, I feel like preaching now. God have mercy. God have mercy. The mind of Christ not only ensures victorious outcomes, Regardless of the struggle, the mind of Christ makes us sober and stable. I'm almost done, but I need y'all to catch this. The mind of Christ makes us sober and stable. You're not walking around pulling out your hair. You're not walking around biting your nails down to a nub. You're not walking around, beloved, uh, on volumes to get you up or on downers to bring you down. You're not walking around bound by the works of darkness. You're not walking around, my God, with the devil, making your nerves worn to a frazzle and your patience gone. The mind of Christ makes you sober and stable. And i tell you one more. The mind of Christ keeps you kingdom focused and Christ-centered. I like how everybody trying to come up with these deep-sounding statements. You must be centered. 
Your aura must be right. <laughs> oh, God, that, that all sounds so deep. But, you know, we've been saying this for a long time. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. <laughs> all of the ground is, is sinking sand. You want to be centered? Stand on Christ. You want to have the right aura about you? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I think Paul put it this way in the book of Acts. I think myself happy. <laughs> oh, come on now. Come on now. I'm not trying to throw rocks at some of these new concepts, but some of these new concepts have tried to make robbery of the word of God and have tried to absent God. But beloved, I want you to hold on to God and have the mind of Christ. Hmm. One of the issues is, as I move to close, our country has not really had the suffering like others, other believers. I mean, we're used to fluff here in the United States. We're in our Western world. None of us have yet to give our lives up for Christ. Come on, let's be honest. Come on. I mean, I haven't seen anybody beheaded. Haven't seen anybody have to give up your position at your job. Not yet. But I want you to know a measure of these things are coming to our country. And um, I don't know how deep it will get. I know there are theories about pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib, no-trib. <laughs> I know there are about seven theories of, actually eight, of when Jesus will be coming back. But the one thing Jesus says that transcends theories is no man knows the day nor the hour when the Son of Man shall come. I'm not going to sit up here and try to read a testimonial or prophetic clock to try to predict when Jesus will come when he said no man knows but the Father. So he told me, like I told the leaders yesterday, what we must do. Occupy till he comes. Busy yourself Till he comes. Mm. Our country. Our world is in conflict. If you're not careful. Your mind will be drugged away from what we ought to be about. But I'm going to tell you as I close. How the mind of Christ should guide us. <laughs> We must seek after and want the mind of Christ. Come on, you got to want it. Come on, Chronicles, let's close now. You got to seek after. You got to want the mind of Christ. Come on, you got to want it because my mind will fail me. My mind will let fear take over. I will get nervous and depressed. I remember a few years ago, Pastor Al and I went somewhere, and this lady didn't know who we were from a can of paint. She came up and started confessing, I'm in therapy three times a week because of this and because of that and because of the other. I can't take it. I, I was about to lay hands and run. I had to figure it out. I called myself on vacation, off duty, in my mind. But this woman needed some serious ministry. I mean, she was in bad shape. She was trying to get us to agree with her situation. And Pastor Al, before I could, spoke up and said, you know what, we have the peace of God. And Pastor Al said, can I pray for you? And the woman, she sat there for a minute, wanting to, you know, wondering if, if I want these folk to lay hands on me. And then she said, oh, I'm okay, I'm gonna see my therapist when I get back. And I said, okay, but we're still gonna pray for you. <laughs> you know, people's mind, God have mercy. They're not seeking the mind of Christ because we have been lied to to think that Jesus is intrusive. But I want to tell you more of what the mind of Christ will do. The mind of Christ, according to Luke 19, 13, you don't have to turn there, but it will keep you advancing. In Luke 19, 13, Jesus said the following words. Occupy till I come. God have mercy. Keep working till I come. 
That's why we're going after property. Because, beloved, we dead yet. That's why we're going after land. Because, beloved, Jesus haven't come yet. We all have got to be about the Father's business. The time is now that we ought to be occupying territory. My God, expanding the kingdom of God. And we must keep our focus on the kingdom. Not on what's going on where we don't live. I'm concerned about Ukraine. I'm praying. As soon as they get legitimate ability to receive toiletries and water, I will be asking that we mobilize the help. But beloved, I am asking you to be in a mindset that until Jesus comes, oh Lord, until we leave this place, that we be focused on kingdom advancement, that we be focused on taking territory, and we be focused on coming into the knowledge of what we've been called to do. Beloved, I'm telling you, this is what the mind of Christ will help you do. You have no need to worry. God owns it all. God will take care of us. He's done a good job thus far, and he will not fail. Can I get a witness up in here? He, he will not fail. Hallelujah. You got to have, you got to have. Come on, I'm closing now. You got to have the mind of Christ. You got to keep your focus on kingdom. You got to declare, Lord, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Come on, chronicler. We got to take territory. We got to occupy until it comes. We got to put ourselves in a posture of saying, not my will, but thine be done. Hallelujah. Lord, I'm your servant. I'm your representative. I'm your kingdom, Lord God, worker. I have no time to quit. No time. No time to quit. So I'm asking you to get the mind of Christ. I'm asking you to align your head with the agenda of God. Put down that other foolishness. It's time to let it go. Come on. You don't need, and I'm not against therapy, but you don't need therapy to replace your time in God's presence. Matter of fact, a good therapist will tell you your first need is the presence of God because in his presence is fullness of joy. At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. Can I pray for you? Eyes are closed, heads are raised. <clears throat> Father, I declare over the minds of the people. Father, I declare over the minds of the people. Perfect peace. Peace that won't leave. Peace that won't soon depart. Father, in our homes, this pandemic season, has put us in a place, let me have that remote, have put us in a place on top of the great thing of some of our family relationships being stressed and pulled, thank you, sweet, in directions that we didn't plan. Some of our homes have been stretched beyond what our established principles have been laid out. These two years, have caused some of our lives to be put in a place, Lord, that some of us are wondering what's going to happen in my future. But Lord, you've not changed. Hey, you've not changed. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You're still God, and you're still good. Let our minds be strengthened to come in agreement with your word and your will. We refuse to hold on to old mindsets. We refuse to let the Leviathan spirit plant thoughts in our mind that are not true. We refuse 
to entertain our feelings as they are the supreme order of our lives when we know the fact of the word of God is. Lord, I pray that we develop the mind of Christ. I pray that we develop that heart for you and that we allow you to make our minds strong in you. To not live by what we see, but live by what you say. To not live by what we hear outside of what you said that we want to hear from your word. I pray for sobriety. I pray for sobriety and that we busy ourselves about kingdom agenda. Now is that day. Now is that time. Now is that order. In Jesus' name. Come on, lay your hands on your own head. This is the altar call. Put your hands on your head and declare, I have the mind of Christ. As we get ready to take communion, I want the heads of household to go get the communion and ordinances. And I want everybody else to begin to declare, I have the mind of Christ. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Some of you might be saying, but preacher, how am I going to develop the mind of Christ? You're going through what you need right now. You're hearing the word. You're hearing the word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. Hear the word. Hear the word. Saturate your mind in the word and let the mind of Christ be in you. Right now, get your sacraments. We'll take a communion unto a stronger word. Come on, sweet. We're taking communion into a stronger mindset. I want you to say, Lord, with this communion today, I am committing to putting aside the old mindset. I'm going to purposely work on it. I'm going to purposely involve myself in what I must do to pull off the old mindset. My thinking has to be renewed. My, 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 my thought patterns have to be upgraded. Just like my computer, the old system of Windows uh, with the little card and, 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 and stuff, uh, 10 years old, don't work no more. God, like Windows in some cases, has given upgrades. <laughs> And, and you need the upgrades. We need new wine for these new wine skins that God is making us. You didn't survive this pandemic to be the same. There's an upgraded Jew that God wants to use with the mind of Christ. So I take this bread. This represents the body. It is not the body. Oh, our Lord, I'm not arguing with anybody's religion, but this wafer is not Jesus. It represents his broken body that was laid upon with our sin and our depression and our hurt and pain. When we take this bread and eat it, it reminds us of the sacrifice of Jesus. Take it now, the broken body of our Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. That body that was whipped, torn, but he did it for us. Now let's take that cup because when the body was whipped, the blood was shed. When his body was beaten, his blood ran for us. Mm -hmm. The Bible is very clear that without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. Jesus' blood cleanses us from sin. Worthy is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Mm. Let's take this cup and let it be a reminder. This is not the blood of Jesus. It represents his blood. Let's take now the shed blood of our Lord Jesus, what this represents. And let's drink all of it together.
Thank God for the blood. I can hear the Savior say, my strength indeed is small. Child of weak, let's watch and pray and find in me thine all and all. Come on, let's sing this together. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Hallelujah. Sin has left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. One more time, everybody. Jesus paid it all. Hallelujah. Oh, to him I owe. Glory. Sin has left the crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Beloved, believe that. Let that renew your mind. What Jesus did cannot be undone. What Jesus suffered was not in vain. And today I declare he is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So my mind can be renewed. Evangelist Shelley come and give how people can contact us. Come on now. Our numbers, our email, our website, all that will be posted. Somebody today is making a decision to give their heart to Jesus. And we want to hear about it. Come on, Elder Shelley. Elder Harriet, that's her nickname. Hallelujah. We know it's Shelley. We know it's Elder Harriet. We love her. Yeah. Come on, tell them how they can get in touch with us about yeah. how Hallelujah. they've given their hearts to Jesus. Glory to your name, God. Don't leave. We got good news. What a word, what a word. Didn't I tell you that you wouldn't be disappointed if you just stick around? Um, we, our bishop, this is what he does. So I pray that if you're a guest that you'll come back. But um, as you were saying about the mind of Christ, in order for the first step for the mind of Christ, you know, just on the, the song, Jesus paid it all. So the, one of the gifts is salvation. And it's available to one and all. So if you have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior yet, the first step to, become, to, to obtain in the mind of Christ is you have to first admit that you are a sinner and that you are falling short of the glory of God. And if that's in Romans 3, verse 20, 23. And you have to believe. You say, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ for God... For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the mind of Christ. And then you have to commit. you got to commit. So when you, when you admit and you believe and you confess with your mouth, you gotta, you got to commit to it. You can't just, you can't just believe. you gotta, you got you to gotta turn your life around and you got, you got to commit to being a believer in Christ. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus has as Lord and believe in your heart that God will raise him from the dead, you will be saved. So that's the first step to, to, to obtain in the, 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 the mind of Christ because Jesus paid it all for you already. So it, 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 it's easy for you to obtain the, the mind of Christ because of what Jesus has done. But you, you have to first admit you got to believe and you got to commit to him. And when you do that, when you finish that, you know, another way to get the, to reach the mind of Christ, get the mind of Christ is you have to read those words. So after you believe and you commit, after you admit that you believe and you commit, you gotta you gotta now the, the committed part is 
You gotta start reading the word of God. You gotta start praying. And you gotta start trusting Him. So whatever the word of God say, you just don't you 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 make it a part of your your life. So that's how you become. That's how you obtain the mind of Christ. So you have to read. You have you have to first um, accept salvation. Then you gotta read the word of God, and then you gotta be uh, spirit filled. So if you already if you already um have um accept salvation and you're already reading your word then, and if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit just lift your hand today and ask Him to 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 fill you with His Spirit today. So I pray for you today. Let lift your hands if you're not saved. Let's let's just pray for you today. I pray God that you'll 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 save somebody today. I pray, dear God, that somebody, dear God, that needs you today, dear God, will be filled with your spirit, oh God. And I pray, dear God, that somebody will commit to reading your word today, dear God. I pray, dear God, that they will be spirit-led today, dear God, so they will have the, the mind of Christ Jesus with them today, dear God. And if you if you have prayed that prayer, if you have prayed, if you have committed, if you admit, and if you decide to commit to 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 to, to this journey, then you as a, as a baby in Christ, baby, don't, whenever there's a, a newborn baby, baby don't, the baby cries. And it's born into a family. So you're going to need a family to grow. So it, it, um, the first step is, is is accepting it, but you need to grow. When you're reading the Word and you're praying and you're going through, through trials and tribulations, you're born into a family. So when you become spiritually reborn, you need a family. And what place better to join than Life Builders Church? So there, there's information. If you need to reach out to us, here's the, the, the information. If you want to become a partner, if you just accept the Lord Jesus Christ, if you if you if you decide that you're gonna walk this thing out, or you just want more information, here is the information. Take a, take take your, your camera and take your um your your phone and take a picture of the uh, of this. So later on you can you can remember. Or uh, you can if you don't have the phone, you can write it down. It's www.lbcbaltimore.org. Or uh, you can call us at four four three seven seven six. Zero two five five. Let me repeat that because I know I um, talk a little fast. I'm a Jamaican, so I'm a fast talker. So it's www.lbcbaltimore.org. O R G. Call us at four four three seven seven six zero two five four five five. And you can email us at lbcministry at yahoo.com. Come on. We love new new believers. We we want you to become a part of us. We want you to become our family. We love in our family and, and and we appreciate our family and we we're excited for you to 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 come and join and to call us. But we can't we we, we can't reach you if you don't reach out to us too. So call, write, email. There's the information. Take a picture of it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And welcome to the family of Christ. Hallelujah. Welcome to Life Builders Church. It is opportunity time in Life Builders Church. Let us um, say that um, the Life Builders um, Declaration for Forgiven. Life Builders Church as generous and faithful tithers and givers. Your generosity, your generosity. Generous giving has value to this ministry. So now is your opportunity to continue your generosity in giving in Jesus' name. And there's so many ways to do that. So here are some of the ways that you can do. You can go online and you can do you can go to www.lbcbaltimore.org. You can do cash up um, at dollar sign life builders church. You can go at PayPal and it's um, at Life Builders Church LBC Ministry at Yahoo.com. And you have www.paypal.me slash Life Builders Church. Take a picture of it so you can go back to it All right, before the screen changes. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. You can give, you can, you can give by. Mail at Life Builders Church um, in care of Vinches Inc., 100 West Street, Suite 300, Towson, MD, 
So they have um, this slogan here, B-A-P, build your faith, agree with God, agree as LBC partner, P, prayer. How can you help? We want to raise far over $5,000. We want you can do it by giving, tithes and offering, social media, share with network using pound LBC B A P. Sponsorship, you can send potential business to Sister Colette Flowers at T Y B O O o2 at hotmail.com and i want you to take a picture of this also because we want we want you to participate so please take a picture of this so you can reach out and you can donate in whatever way you can okay god bless you hallelujah given statements are available please email d r k a t r i n a foster at gmail.com and or T. Carrington at msn.com to have your statement mail. Please send a mailing address to the email above. Can you please take a picture of this also if you need your statement? Okay. Update. New Sunday worship meeting link. Update. Um, so the we have a new um, ID code. So um, here it is. It's 8. Three two two seven seven four six two five, and the password is eight two four six nine zero, and this is how we're gonna um, you're gonna get onto to Zoom. So forget the the old one because this is the new one that um, it is gonna be used. Or you can use um, uh, we can go on and, and um, oh. Here's the information right here. You can use that information, but that is the ID and password. And it's every Sunday at 10 a.m. Man breakfast. Say hoo hoo to the man of Life Builders Church. March 19. We need strong men, so we need you guys to continue to come together and worship together. And March 19 at 9 a.m. Um, for more information, contact Deacon Vince Patway, 443-802-8906. Okay? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Wednesday Impact Group at 7.30 p.m. The meeting ID is 876-9567-6730. And the passcode is 037569. And every week, um, um, Elder Kyra or someone, one of the, the, the ministers are sending out the information too. So write this down and please join us um, in, on every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. for our impact group. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, join us for prayer every morning at 6.15 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. 6.05 475 47 out 100. Access code is 585263. Please join us. If you are going through anything and you need some prayer, why don't you start the day with, with, with us every morning at 615? Whether rain, shine, snow, whatever it is, holidays, yep, holidays too. There's someone that always on the line frame. Hallelujah to your name. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Got you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So, um, can you read it all a little bit? There's something there. I can't see the name up top. Um, it's Wallen. Um, there's a view, I think it's, um, Sister Shalander, Grandmother, Ongoing Funeral, and it, the viewing is Thursday, March 10th, um, at 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. And it is at um, 1022 Guilford Road, Jessup, Maryland, 2079-4. That's the zip code. And it's our, our funeral home. And um, the service is Friday, March 11th. And the wake is at 1030 a.m. And the service is at 11 a.m. And it's the same address. 
same funeral home, um, the service. The viewing is at the same place and the service is at the same place. And the intermediate, um, the rest of the cemetery is going to be 7310 Ridge Road, Anova, MD, 21076. And this is our sister, Shalanda. Let us support each other. You know, um, to lose a family member is not easy. And if, so if you, can, if you are able to... Um, to make the make this, if you're not working and you can support our sister, please, please, please support our sister. And March 10th to the and March 10th is um Michael Walcott birthday too. So uh, and that day, if if you um have his number, give him a call, text him. Um, if you have his Facebook, send him a Facebook a uh, 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 message on Facebook. Just let us encourage our young people. Okay. Um. Brother Ronnie need to make an announcement and then I'll come back with the um with a message from um Sister Roz. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elder Harriet. You're welcome. Uh, it is a pleasure to be before you this morning. Um, worship service always gives me a, a lift. It, it, I actually feel the uplifting every time I come into the realm of God. Um, and I just wanted to say to Sister Talia, you started us off with the bang with your praise and then Bishop brought it home with the, with the word and Elder Harriet, you keep us all tied together during the worship service. So thank you, thank you so much. I come before you this morning to remind you about our building fund project. Uh, Sister Harriet had the, um, the flyer put up earlier and we are using the acronym BAP. The letter B stands for building your faith. The letter A stands for our agreement with God and our agreement as LBC partners. And the letter B represents our prayer. We have only started this uh, for about a week and a half or two weeks now. We've uh, been doing some planning. Uh, so what I want to let you know is how you can help how the LBC partners and anyone who's looking at this as a guest or anyone who has been shared this service, how you can help us. Number one, you can help us by giving. We are asking those who can to give a $1,000 donation or whatever you can afford. Now, when you give the offering, please be sure to include that acronym BAP in the memo of your check or somewhere on your correspondence so that we know exactly where these proceeds need to be directed. Another way you can help our project is via our social media campaign. We have plans underway for our social media campaign or what we call um, hashtag BAP. And we are asking you to share with your family and your friends and ask them to support our project. They will be sowing into very good and fertile ground. Another way you can help us reach our goal is by sponsorships. If you know of a business that may be interested in participating, we have sponsors we have sponsorship packages available for them. And please get those uh, businesses' names to Sister Carlette Flowers, who is heading up our sponsorship part of the project. On the flyer that you see right now is Sister Flowers' um, email address. And Sister uh, uh, Flowers, if you're still on the line, if you could uh, post your contact phone number in the chat, uh, I really would appreciate it. That way, uh, there'll be two ways that everyone can reach you. Once again, please do not uh, forget to include the acronym BAP on any check that you send for our building project 
or any correspondence so that we know exactly where that money is directed. To date, I am happy to announce within a week and a half or two weeks at the most, the BAP project, we have posted $6,861.20 to date. $6,861.20 to date. And we thank you, thank you everyone who has, uh, who has uh, donated to this uh, uh, total. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Please, again, do not forget to post the acronym BAP on any, or any offerings or any correspondence related to the offerings so we know exactly where this money needs to be directed. I also would like to remind everyone, please do not forget to continue your normal tithes and offerings beyond our BAP project, because we still have expenses that we have to cover for the kingdom of God. We have uh, expenses for our uh, technology um, uh, networks, uh, uh, our Facebook page, our, our Zoom licenses, uh, um, and, and, and everything else. So we thank you for what you've done so far. But we have so much, so much more work to do. And remember, encourage everyone to please do their best. Because if we do the possible, we know that God will do the impossible. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please come back with us next Sunday. Share this information with your friends, your family, uh, your business partners, your business colleagues, and we will continue on. We are going to reach this goal so that we can spur the expansion of God's kingdom. Thank you, Elder Harriet. I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Brother Ronnie. Thank you. Um... We are, we are almost there. We're almost over. But um, uh, March is National Nutrition Month, and Sister Rise wants me to let you know what the theme is. And the theme is Let's March into Good Health by Heating Healthy and Starting by Drinking Plenty of Water. Water, water uh, is, um, I can't stress this enough. You know, um, she's the one that sent me this information here. But water, water is is one of those. It's so simple, but it's it it is it, it, such a big impact. Water will um, help you to lose weight. It will lower your blood pressure. It will lower your, your glucose level. It will your body need, our body is made up primary of water, and we need water to. We have a lot of toxins that, that 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 get into our body, and we need to get it out. And in order for us to get it out, we need to drink water. If you're taking your medication, don't take it with, with um, coffee and orange juice and soda. Those stuff is either going to decrease the medication or increase it. So you um, simple, just take a glass, eight ounce glass of water whenever you get the medication and drink and take it. Or if you're not taking medication, drink eight glass of water every day. But it, um, it helps to, to detoxify your body and it helps you to, to mentally, physically, in every way, water, water is good for you. So... Just a little simple, and I know that sometimes we we don't have, some people don't like water. You can put some flavor, like um, what I normally do um, with my water. I will take a um like um lemon lemon juice, and I put lemon juice in it. Or you can put different stuff, like different different flavor stuff to it. But you don't want to go put anything that is toxic in the water. So something natural. You don't want to put like fruits and vegetables. You can you can put it that, that in there too. And the next step that you want us to do is to increase our fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables are important. It helps 
to have bulk, you have mineral and nutrients that you need. Um, and you need to stay away from fried food. And it said, let's get fit, let's stay healthy. And you need, and I'm going to have something, you need a balanced meal. So you have the carb, the protein, and the fruits and the vegetables. Please do not forget your fruits and vegetables. Because work, put all this together, your body needs all that together. So let's just, let's just um, get healthy for as we spring, as we march into March, and we go forward throughout the year. Let us not neglect ourselves. Let us not neglect our body. I know that sometimes as caregivers, as mothers and parents, I know that sometimes it's hard to take care of yourself. But I always tell somebody, my patients, if you are not healthy, if, if you are sick or you're not around, who's going to take care of the loved one? If you're dying, how are you going to take care of somebody else? How are you going to protect somebody else if you're not okay? So you have to first take care of yourself before you can take care of somebody else. If the plane is going down, you got to put your mask on first before you're trying to save somebody else because a dead person can't save somebody. So take care of yourself. And that's the message from Sister Roz. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Let us say it. God dwells in the midst of Life Builders Church. God dwells in the midst of a blessed community. Grace and peace be unto you. Peace be multiplied. May God bless you and keep you this week. And may he make his face to shine upon you. Life builder, continue to shine and impact this generation, this world. Wherever your mountain is, take it this week. In Jesus' name, and we'll see you next week, Life Builders Church. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Oh